Hello, I'm Matt Greencroft and I'm the author of Virtual Pair Programmer's Java Fundamentals Training Course. This is the second of two short follow-up videos to that course. The first video covered the use of the static keyword and if you haven't seen that video, just click the link below. In Chapter 26 of Java Fundamentals, we looked at automatic resource management when we were working with a database. After the course went live, we noticed that there's a neater way to write some of the code that I'd shown you, and so I'm now going to demonstrate that in this short follow-up video. As a quick reminder, we saw that from Java 7 onwards, we don't need to create a complicated try-finally-catch block system to ensure that our database objects or any other resources we might be working with are closed, as Java can handle this for us. So here's our starting point, and this code that I'm now showing you on screen can be found in the video for chapter 26 at roughly 16 minutes into that chapter. Let's just remind ourselves of what this code does. We start by loading in the driver for the database, and that has its own try block. And then we created a series of three try blocks, each one having its own dedicated resource that might need to be closed. We've got one for connection, one for statement, and one for result set. And then assuming all three of those worked, we looped through the result set printing out the results. We've got a couple of catch blocks that just simply print out that something went wrong and details of what the exception was. So reasonably simple code, and that's why I left it in the course. I'm going to just run this code to check it's working. I've got my Derby database running in the background. So I'll click on the play button and there's the results of our result set. So this code works. So right now what we've got is three separate try with resources statements. By try with resources, I mean a try statement that uses regular brackets to run code that opens a resource. So the structure of our code right now is to open the connection and then only go further if that worked. Next, we create a statement, and again, we only go further if that worked, and so on. We've created this series of nested blocks, each of which will only run if the one before it worked. Now, while that might seem sensible, what we've ended up with here is an unnecessarily complicated structure. And where we have unnecessarily complicated code, we have the potential for bugs. So the key thing I didn't do on the course was just go that little bit further and say that you can have multiple resources within a single try with resources statement. And these resources don't have to even be related to each other. In the same try with resources statement, we could open a file and connect to a database. And when the code finishes running, Java will close them successfully at the end of the code if they're open. So let's tidy up the code we've got here into a single try with resources statement. Now I'm going to separate each line in the try with resources statement with a semicolon. So what I can do is put a semicolon here. On the next line down, I'll move my statement line. So I'm just doing a cut and paste, semicolon to end that line, and my result set as well. Now the last of these lines doesn't need the semicolon at the end of it. I'll just tidy up by getting rid of these now no longer needed try blocks. I'll need one bracket in there. I think I need to remove two of these. I'll just redo the indents, Control A, Control I, just to see what we've got here. I can see I've got a little error here. I think I've just got an extra bracket I don't need, so I'll just remove that. Okay, it looks like my code's compiling. So let's just tidy this up. Unfortunately, for some reason, Eclipse doesn't really indent this that well, but here's my try line. My open bracket starts here. My closed bracket is currently down here. I'll just tidy this up and move it up a line. Now, I really want my indentations to come back to here to so be in line with the try block. That's the normal way. So I'll just bring these, make it a little bit neater to read on screen. Okay, so let's give it just some space. So I've now got a single try with resources statement. In that statement, I get three objects are connected, all of which will need to be closed at the end of my code. 
And then I've got my code that's going to work with those objects, simply printing out each item in the result set within my try block. And of course, I've got two catch blocks just to tell us what went wrong if it doesn't work. I'll just save and run that code to check it works. And there's our list of items. One final thing we can do that makes this code even neater is this class not found exception relates to this first line of code up here. So we've got this second try block nested within the first one, and we don't even need that. So I can say, this is our first try block. This is the catch block relating to the first try block. Here's our second try block, and I'll just unindent these. And here's our catch block relating to our second try block. Just unindent these, remove the extra space that we don't need. So here's my final code. I've got a single try block, which loads the driver and its own catch block. And that makes sense because we only need to load the driver once. We might have multiple try catch blocks further down here that do lots of different things with the database, but we've got a single area to load the driver. That sits by itself. It looks quite neat. And then we have a try with resources statement that loads up all of the different resources that need to be closed in one go, runs our code in the middle, and a single catch block at the end. So that's it. I know this has been a short video, but if you are using the Java 7 Try With Resources statements, I hope that this will help you write more efficient code. If you've come to this video and haven't yet seen the Java Fundamentals course, then the link to the course is now shown below. Virtual Pair Programmers has a number of courses covering different topics in Java, including the Spring Framework, Hibernate, and Java EE. And if you have been following the Java Fundamentals course, don't forget to keep an eye on my blog where any follow-up information is published. And the link to my blog is now shown below.